the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Gloves Are Off. I'm Moses Wolden. We've got a great show for you, including these guys who haven't been fired yet for... Whatever yeah, reason. not yet. The show's not done yet, though. Yeah, well, that's, that's well, at least you're still around. Greg Buchanan, how are you? Not bad, Moses. My co-host, and I'm pleased to be joined by, again, a uh, resident fan, a, as well as a, a referee in town and a sports, I guess, I, I call you Elias Sports because you have great knowledge when it comes to it. Brett Morton, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me on the show again. Excellent. All how right. You? Well, you know what? Kick it off. I was kind of joking around a little bit. The reason why I'm talking about Dallas Aikens, of course, uh, came out today uh, in a press conference to say, you know what? Yes, I got fired, but this is still a great organization. I don't know why he would say that. Maybe he's just covering its tracks or maybe looking for another job with Hockey Canada like, like Ralph he, he, needs, he needs a reference. Absolutely. So, so maybe you don't, yeah, exactly. Don't bite the hand that fed you or fired you in this case. Uh, but, what you, but you look at the situation uh, going into this season. He was given a bad team with a lot of holes in the lineup. No goalies or at least no standout goalie. You have no centerman that you can rely on outside of maybe Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who has actually developed into a better one this year. Outside of that, he wasn't really given anything else uh, on top of that as well. So if you look at the situation and the reason he got fired, was he doomed to fail right from the start? And is this entirely Aikens' fault? As much as we like to hark on him saying, why did you do this? You look at him, he's frustrated, doesn't even know some answers. But is it fair to blame him completely? I don't think so. I think it's more organizational, like you've had Kevin Lowe there for years and the team has been the same. You go through coach after coach after coach after coach. No, it's not always the coach's fault. There's something wrong with the players. And I think Mc having McTavish down on the bench might be a good thing because then he can actually go in that room and see who the real elephant is and see what the problem is there. But the organization itself, there's so many things that are just structurally wrong with that. Like you look at Craig McTavish, he was a head coach, got fired got promoted to a job behind the scenes, then got promoted to GM, and then all of a sudden rehired him as a coach. Like, kind of an organization <laughs> yeah. allows that to happen. I don't know. I think there's more than just the coaching. Involved. Yeah, it, it's too easy right now to blame Dallas. Um, but I, 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 the first two rounds they've been selecting in, it, first two rounds in any, in any draft is easy. It's rounds three, four, and five, and six that they have completely blown out of the water. Like, they have not even got any decent players out of those selections for years. And those three, four, five, and six rounds, Henry Lundquist from the New York Rangers was a fifth round selection of the Rangers. <laughs> He's had a pretty good career. So it's, it's your scouting staff. It's so many different things in the Oilers. And to pin it on Dallas is the reason why. Unfortunately, he's a coach and he's the fall guy. But I really think they flawed in even hiring the guy. I think he was a guy from Toronto that the Toronto media made him up to be this great coach, the best coach outside of the NHL because of the Toronto media said it. Mac T bought in and Mac T quickly realized, yeah, he's not that good. Well, well you look at the guy they have in place with, is it Todd Nelson? He's a guy who's up and coming. He's in the, within the organization. OKC doesn't have that fanfare out in Toronto, guys. With that said, do you think he could do the job and do, do it quite well? So you go from one inexperienced NHL coach to another inexperienced NHL coach. But this NHL guy doesn't coach. have the hype or fanfare as yeah. much as you said and, with Dallas Higgins. Yeah, he seemed like he was more over, over his head than Mr. Yeah. Nelson, but time will only tell. Yeah, and, and Todd I've known from his Prince Albert days with the Raiders, and he was a solid player, a solid guy. Uh, he's, he's paid his uh, dues in the American Hockey League. Uh, yeah, he's an opportunity right now for him. Is he going to be the head coach come the fall? I think time's going to answer that. I think for Dallas, for example, I just think that guy doesn't shut up. Or really, he, he spoke 27 minutes today about himself, which goes a long way to tell you what Dallas is all about. He comes into the Oilers organization and belittles some very long-standing members of the media in Edmonton and tells them, there's no more donuts in the media room. You're telling Terry Jones he can't eat a donut? Are you telling me that? Really? Serious? <laughs> so it, Dallas it got off to the wrong foot right off the start, and it just got worse as he got went Brett? on. Brett? I don't think Todd Nelson's an answer either, like Greg said. Or, yeah, that he's an inexperienced coach. He's no NHL experience. And I don't think, why does it have to be the Edmonton Oilers that have to give these guys chances, the stomping grounds of in the NHL, and they go there and they don't do anything? Like... Even when he uh, interviewed Aikens, it was for the assistant coaching job. And like you said, Aikens loves to talk. And he just bought 
uh, Craig McTavish, and he's like, no, Kruger, you're gone. This is my guy, and this is like, it's all about the word of mouth, and like you said, what did he do, AHL? Of course, Toronto's going to blow everything up. I don't know. I just think the AHL experience Speaking coaches. Speaking of blowing things up, we're going to move on to Johnny Manziel. The hype around this guy was so evident that even Fox, which carried the game, showed it to half the country. Originally, it was only 18% of the country was supposed to watch it. So you look at the magnitude of everybody's trying, I guess, into the Manziel hype. Well, he became a dud, albeit he's only played five professional quarters. Is there enough to judge him? And if you're the Browns, do you maybe regret a little bit bringing this guy in and drafting him at 22nd overall last year? Okay, he didn't play that much. Okay, do you judge him on one start? No, you don't. You judge him on his fundamentals as a quarterback? Yeah, you can. Fundamentally, he's not a good quarterback, folks. Seriously. I know he, he won the NCAA, and he's this legendary player coming from the NCAA, and all that hype, and he's all this. You know what? He's an average quarterback, seriously. And I, and I think you're going to give more and more starts, and the proof's going to be in the pudding. He, he ain't that good. Well, like, I think most of it is just hype. Like, what's he done? Really, nothing. And even the Browns themselves, like, if they think he's the answer, I don't think so. The Browns have always gone in with two quarterbacks, and they've never had a number one guy. Why is Johnny Menzel the answer? I don't think he is. Well, well, you know what? The thing, quarterbacks, yeah. to be exact. And, and the thing is, it's not like. The American media likes to hype up somebody. Like, you know, oh, what's that guy, the guy, Tim Tebow? Yeah, uh, they hyped him up to the next coming, and now Tim Tebow can get a job in arena football. Although the guy can win. And I'm not saying that it's different with, with, with Tim Tebow, but I'm thinking with, or with um, Johnny Manziel. But if you look at Johnny Manziel, he's more like a Russell Wilson. If he could adapt and mold his game into he Russell wishes, Wilson, he wishes he'd be he was, better. If he's in a, yeah. as astute as Russell Wilson is for the game, and that's just, uh, let's speak volumes. I think that the people that he's looking into or are aspiring to be are more like the Peyton Mannings and Tom Brady's. And let's be honest, those guys are about 6'3", 6'4". They have a different mechanics. And like you said, they're more pocket passers. His ability revolves around him rolling out of the pocket, going into that play action, having a solid run game. Those things were not existent for him. And the thing is, with those five bad quarters, I'm going to say this. He had a lot of drop balls. A couple passes were a little high but not enough that you can have a guy like Josh Gordon to come down with it or a guy who's completely wide open like Brett Hawkins. And what does he do? He drops the ball. So little things like that, it's going to come in time. And, of course, they, they were surrounded by Brian Hoyer for, what, 13 games? Yeah. So I'm thinking you got to give them a little more credit, guys, right? I think they should maybe try him out at the wide receiver. They did that one trick play a couple weeks and back. It worked, and it but worked, you know what? So it got called it back got called because of penalties. Back penalties. So maybe try okay, him out uh, the Very side. quickly, guys, uh, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, one of the best is the best team in the league, but yet they've been decimated by injuries. They lost their backup quarterback on Thursday against the Rams. You look at the, d the defense that's decimated by injuries, but yet they still managed to find ways to win. And they also lost their running back to the season or for the season. So you look at that and how they are. Are they still legitimate Super Bowl contenders despite all the injuries to key positions? I think it'll be tough. I think this weekend when they play Seattle, I think there'll be a big test to see where their team actually is. But uh, they've lost lots of good guys, key guys. I don't know if they're going to be able to continue and ride it out to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's not like you're losing guys in positions of maybe like a defensive back or possibly in the line. You're losing guys in key positions, running back, quarterback, and, and you're losing your starter. You're losing your backup. You're losing your starting running back. You just don't replace those guys and just keep on going. And you just don't replace them and play against a team like Seattle and you're, right now, this weekend, I think they're just hoping not just to you know, hang in there, but they're just hoping that they keep it close because, like, seriously, Seattle's on a roll right now. Seattle's looking as good as they did last year. So uh, I love to see the Cinderella story, the Cardinals continue on, but it just can't with all the injuries. All right, guys, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we're going to talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs and their fantastic run of late, and plus Adrian Peterson and his decision to retire, perhaps. Stay tuned.